Hi everybody, it's Lene. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel today. So I'm back with another one sheet wonder, one page wonder, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use a 12 by 12 sheet. Returning to Meadow Bloom's 12 by 12 pattern cardstock from Paper Wishes Hot Off the Press. I used that in last week's video and I'm returning to it because there's just so many more pretty papers to be used here and I thought we would just take a look at it. I am really leaning towards this one. What's great about this collection are the soft colors, it's double-sided, but they've got strong borders on them, which really helps um, in this particular project. I'm really loving this yellow one as well with the beautiful flowers on the back. And then of course we've got this green one that's gorgeous. And then this is the one we used last week. So I'm, I'm definitely not gonna use that one. It's so beautiful. Um, and then we've got uh, some a little additional support pieces here in cutouts and card topper pieces that um, we might use for the ephemera things on the inside of the book because I don't count those as part of the, the little one sheet wonders. Um, all right, so making a decision, I think I'm gonna use the yellow. Yes, I'm going to use the yellow. All right. So I'm also going to be using some of these little index cards. These are three by fives. You can get these any place they school, sell school supplies. I picked these up at the dollar store and we're gonna be using these for the little ephemera inserts on inside of our little project today. Before I get started on that, <clears throat> today is Friday and yesterday I did stop at my local thrift to check out what they might have and I picked up some really cool ephemera pieces. I don't think I'll be using them today but I wanted to show you kinds of things that you can pick up for doing junk journals and things like that. This was a little uh, blue chip savings book all right and it doesn't say when it's from but it is just pristine. They had a whole basket full of these and I looked in the back and the stores where you would redeem these, we only had one in Oregon, in Medford, Oregon. So it wouldn't have been something that I saw in my childhood, although I feel like they're very close to green stamps. And I used to love collecting green stamps with my brother um, when we were kids and I have a very vivid memory of getting to redeem them once at a green stamp store and um, at a redemption center and it was amazing. Um, so yeah, this is really cool. I love that you could just tear these out and use these as ephemera bits. And this was only 50 cents. I also love picking up kind of odd little postcards from just random places that wouldn't you wouldn't conceive think are very special at the time. Like why was that postcard worthy? But this one was the Windmill Market. It's a pretty cool building. And this is from California. And then also this great postcard, also Cambridge Motor Lodge. Also, um, let's see, this one's in California as well. And I thought those would be great to add to my little collection. I also found this beautiful postcard, uh, The Legend of the Sand Dollar. I'm just gonna like hold that still so you can freeze that frame and read that. Um, I grew up with this little um, sort of legend about the sand dollar. They're very popular on the Oregon coast. You can find them everywhere. And so this was a really fun thing to find. And then I also found these great vintage postcards that are like from way back. They're both from Oregon. And yeah, this one's from Portland. And this one's from, oh, this one's from Chicago. Cool. And uh, yeah, I have no idea how old they are, but I thought just the painted images are just amazing. All right, so those are some, some ephemera ideas. Oh, another one. Oh, we had Chinese food this week. <laughs> so don't forget to keep those little fortunes. This is a great one. Dreams are extremely important. You can't do it unless you imagine it. So I mean, look for that in a upcoming junk journal. All right, so of you guys. We're gonna cut this down to two six by 12 pieces. Okay, right down the center. All right, and then I've also printed out to go on the inside. Actually, I printed out the same one. <laughs> um, 
these are my way of like printing directly on cards and things like that on a certain size. You could take these, tape them right over this and then hand feed them through your printer. And then you're going to get these great little cards, three by five cards. They're lined on the other side so you can do special messages and things like that. But we're going to do some coloring techniques on those. So that's what we're going to be working with as well. All right, so let me cut down some paper and then we'll be right back. Now we're going to do some scoring since I've cut this down to 12 inches by 6 inches. All right, so this is going to be the outside of our beautiful little folio we're going to be making. And this is going to be the inside. So I have this on my scoreboard and I'm going to score this at two inches, five and a half inches. And then if I had a 12 inch wide scoreboard, then I would score it at nine and a half inches. Okay, so it would also go right there, right on the edge of that. Okay, but I just have an eight by eight. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna flip it around and score it at two and a half. All right, so let's measure again. We have one at two, five and a half, and nine and a half. All right, so we don't need this again. We're gonna fold right here at the two inch. We're gonna fold right here at the nine and a half inch. And then we're gonna fold right there at the five and a half inch. Okay, so you want just a little bit where it doesn't meet all the way because we're gonna put a cute little closure right there. All right, so right here then we have a little tuck spot right there and we have a little tuck spot right there. So, first thing we're gonna do is a little bit of inking. Okay, this is my favorite Friar Brown. It's kind of a nice golden brown. There we go. So as I mentioned, stopped at the thrift yesterday and um, I love going to our local thrift store on Thursday because Everything is 50% off, and that's my kind of thrifting. And I spend about half an hour once a week just kind of walking around. And sometimes I find not anything at all, and sometimes I find little treasures. And I'm happy if I find one little thing. I'm just so excited to come home, show my husband. He does a really good job of pretending to be interested. Wow, that's great. What are you gonna do with that? He's very sweet, very supportive. But um, I try to do the same for him when he finds something that I'm not particularly interested in. All right, so we're good to go there. All right, now we're gonna take just a little bit of glue. Now you could use your tape runner, whatever you'd like, just to put a little bit right here and right here because we're going to glue those flaps shut. All right, like that, and like that. All right, and then I'm going to use, where is my hole punch? I always call it a hole punch, but they're circle punches. <clears throat> All right, so this is a one inch PK Success Circle Punch. And we're going to use just a little bit of part of our leftover from, well, not our leftover, it's our second uh, 12 by six. And we're going to just try to cut out these little flowers are adorable. Okay. I like to make them Kind of extra thick and normally I would just put one like right here to hold that but then it's gonna cover up my cute little bird so 
depending on what paper pack you use, you could use whichever one you want. Maybe we'll put one right there. Maybe we'll put one right there. I don't know, we might have to cover up the bird. Let's see what we can do. And I'm gonna glue two of these together just to give them a little extra reinforcement. All right. And if you wanted to save a little bit of your paper, you could always just cut the back part out of solid cardstock as well. Oops. <clears throat> All right, so this first one, maybe we'll put it right there. Maybe we'll put it right there. I'm just gonna take a little bit of foam tape. There we go, and we're gonna put that right there so that to open this, you just have to go like that, okay? Maybe we'll just keep just that one, just like that. Let's just hold on to that, we'll see how that looks. All right, so now that we have this part done, um, we may put something along this top right corner, the left corner when we're done, but it's gonna look just like this. Now, you could go ahead and you could put, before you glued this shut, you could put a little notch on one side, like that. I kind of like to wait sometimes until I'm done. It looks like an accident, but I like to wait because I'm never really sure where my paper's gonna land, like with that little bird. And I just wanna make sure everything lands where I want it to like with this. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna do some little decorating on these cards. So I'm gonna take another little break. I'm gonna cover the back of these cards with our leftover paper, and then we'll start to do a little inking together. All right, before we get into our little insert ephemera cards, let's finish the cover real quick. So I've got some little ivory crocheted lace from the Dollar Tree. I thought we would put some right across right there. And then put some little flowers on top of that. Just gonna put that right there and then I'll let that dry for a bit. Oops, I might have cut that a little shy. There we go. All right, then I've got my little box of flowers here. And I'm gonna add, just so cute to add just a little one of these right there. And these flowers are just an assortment that I have been collecting in my stash from 49 and Market. And if there are links available for those, um, I usually pick mine up at Paper Wishes, but I will link those for you if they are still available. But yes, always use what you have. All right, so it's gonna go like that. And then I have these Sending Smiles stickers, Dazzle stickers also from Paper Wishes Hot Off The Press. And I'm just gonna add that right there, but I think so I'm just thinking this is just like birthday, something for a friend. Oops. It could be get well, it could be whatever you make. And if you don't have a printer to print on your little index cards, you can use stamps. As I said, use what you have. Hmm. You know what, I'm afraid that one is not gonna show up as well as I would like, so let's try. The white ones. Oh, much better.
I think I need to move that over a little bit. There we go. My pokey tool is pretty indispensable. All right, so we have our little sending smiles. Probably need to trim this part off a little bit. It is extending off the edge a little farther than I like. All right, <clears throat> let's see how our lace is doing. So I think that's what we're gonna do on the front there. So let's get to what's gonna go on the inside. So I have taken my little cards and I've just done a little inking and used a little extra scraps that we had left over from our other six by 12 and a little inking on the back, which is a great place to like write little notes and things like this, added some more of those little flowers. This right here, is a one and a half inch wide circle punch. So we've got the one inch and the one and a half inch. And then I'm gonna show you my little inking process right here. So we've got Warm Honey Prism Ink. And I started just to get a little head start. We're just doing this, but we're not worrying about the bottom quarter of it because we're gonna take over, take that leftover paper that we've got right here. And I've just been tearing it in strips. It doesn't matter if the bottom edge has a tear on it because we're gonna trim that. And if you do a whole long strip, it'll cover the bottom edge of two of our cards. And I'm just gonna put a little ink right there. This is that brown ink. I forgot a very vital step. So before we glue anything on here, we've got our inking done on this side. We need to do the inking on this side. Come on, Lene. And for that, I'm just using a little bit of Blue Lagoon and that Warm Honey. And I want sort of just a mottled look of colors that are picking up the colors that are on the paper. Sorry for all the wiggling. All right, then we're gonna just take some um, clear water. And because this is a dye-based or a water-based ink, it's going to accept that water really nicely and it's gonna give kind of a little splashy look. I like to get my you could go like this, but I like to give mine little chunky splashes. So they really show up. Okay, we're gonna let this dry, but we're gonna hurry it along. We're gonna use the heat gun. Now I would recommend doing all of these at the same time. And of course, if you're printing with your printer, that's gonna accept the water just fine. But if you're stamping, you want to make sure that you're not stamping with a dye-based ink. You want to make sure that you're stamping with a permanent ink, okay? Something like stays on, something like that that's not going to smear when the water hits it. Yep, our little watermarks are showing up really nicely there. And notice I didn't get this soaking wet. I just want a little splash on there. All right, now we can move forward. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here along the bottom edge, and then I'm gonna put a little glue here along the top edge of our paper so everything meets up like it should. Like that. And then we're just gonna do a little trim. And as I said, you can just trim that six by 12 paper down um, or rather just keep tearing on it because we're going to trim down that excess that we're not using. And it doesn't matter if it's got lots of torn edges at the top and the bottom. Now I'm putting a little bit more of that brown ink on there, which I think looks so nice with that yellow. It's very golden. I think the next project for next week, this, this golden and this brown has inspired me. We're gonna do something with honeybees. All 
All right, and then that's that one and a half inch circle. We're gonna fold that in half and that's just making a little pull tab for us. And I'm gonna sandwich that right on the top there, but we're leaving it a little bit above that edge. Just like that. And then we're gonna go back into our little stash of flowers. And I like to use the little small ones. Here we go, here's a little leaf. I was hoping I had a little blue one, but I don't think. There we go, here's a little yellow. And I haven't put one on this side, so. So I think we're ready to fill this up. So we're going to take all three of these little cards, four of these little cards, and I'm thinking it's sort of like, I'm glad we're friends, we're celebrating you, happy birthday, and then the I remember when, how fun to just write, you could write on the back of all of these, that's kind of the point, but how fun to just write a special memory maybe of when you were younger with this person and fun things that you did. And we're just gonna take them and put them two on each side. And it's very interactive. You could enclose photos from you and a friend or you and a sibling from when you were young. You would need to cut them down because this is only gonna be six inches and we've lost a little bit um, from gluing. So you're really about five inches like the cards is the best size to do. And then we're gonna do it like this, and then we've got our little closure. There you go, that's all there is to it. So you guys, I love to give away my projects. It is my favorite. I'm gonna to talk to you when I clean up a little bit. I love to, uh, to give away my projects. And um, so if you like, comment, and subscribe here on my YouTube channel, Lene Creates, we're gonna give this away to one lucky viewer. But the trick is, there's always a trick, right? The trick is you have to watch next week's video to see if you're the winner. So come back next week, check out next week's video. Even better yet, hit that notifications bell up there so you know when I have posted a new video. And then you'll see if you're the winner. Thanks so much for joining me. I had a great time doing this and I'll see you in the next one.